Um, our next speaker uh, is Josh. Josh is a senior site reliability engineer at Google Australia, uh, received a PhD in mathematics from the University of Tasmania in 2014, so I should call you Dr. Josh, appropriately. Um, and in his spare time, he hacks on Go, ancient hardware emulators, and a web comic, and he's gonna show us something very cute that he made. So please welcome Josh. Uh, thank you. Um, so is Russell Keith McGee still in the room? This is a talk about why you shouldn't buy a 3D printer. <laughs> um, OK, so I didn't, I didn't bring it in today um, because I had a lot of stuff to carry. This also wasn't, well, I wasn't here for most of the day because I was busy at the FPGA mini-conf. So I have a shiny white small board of, that's very cool and cute, but um, I, I don't have the balsa wood case anymore. So um, I'm not, I'll leave that at home. Uh, about the concept, I wanted to make a small Mac uh, for a couple of reasons, um, some practical. Um, I would, a gaming machine at work, um, something that I could you know, rip the uh, electronics out of and just throw the case away and I wouldn't have to have any ecological concerns. Um, and I could um, mine some conference material from it. Um, this is not a new idea. There's uh, plenty of prior art in the miniaturized Macintosh space. Um, 2013, there was uh, one um, functioning uh, scale, one third scale model. There's a 3D printable uh, recipe on Adafruit. Um, and uh, late last year, there was an even smaller version uh, made. It was about this big, um, whereas the one I've got is about yeah, big. So, uh, uh, plenty of uh, prior art there, but all of these are like 3D printed or involve plastic in some way or, or, or perhaps bent metal. Whereas I wanted to focus on balsa wood. Um, I chose balsa wood because I don't have a um, 3D printer and also getting into OpenSCAD and so on just drove me mad. So I decided you know, I want something I can prototype quickly and that's what I did. So um, a bit about how I um, decided to construct this. Um, the, the original Macintosh was sort of built, um, everything was sort of bolted onto the front of um, the thing. There's a kind of a chassis where the motherboard would slide in and there was a cathode ray tube that would sit on top of it and it was all attached more or less to the front of the device. And uh, the, other, the remaining five sides were a single shell that would slide on top. However, there's uh, a few problems with this and I discovered uh, that it got in the way of the construction early on. Um, iteration zero didn't even make it to the base layer I um, had glued a few pieces of balsa wood together along the um, thin edge, and that doesn't work very well. It's kind of brittle. So this is all that remains of iteration zero. Um, so obviously, it's not great to glue balsa wood that way. Um, also, it uh, wasn't very easy to hold the display in that way. If I tried to add the dis um, a small five-inch screen, despite its size, it's actually fairly heavy and made of glass, so it would tend to fall out, and the, the glue wouldn't set. Um, so that brings me to iteration one, which I got mostly done. In this um, example, I focused sort of on the sides as kind of a support for the screen, and the screen would um, sit in a sort of recess uh, back on this slide. Um, however, this also has a problem. Uh, the Raspberry Pi itself would sit on the bottom. Um, and that the problem basically is, well, there's the display and there's the Raspberry Pi. And um, balsa wood is quite light, so what happens is um, it's very front heavy. <laughs> um, my solution to this in the next iteration was to add more wood in the bottom, basically. Um, and so there it is, next to its older brothers, uh, or sisters, I suppose, um, complete with their screen. So um, in this case, um, it was easier to um, just wedge the screen in there, so it didn't, couldn't, it's not replaceable. I'd have to basically destroy the case to replace the parts. But it is a fairly compact um, single unit. And I got to show it off at the conference. So. And hopefully you all came and saw it yesterday. So I'm absolved of not bringing it in today. <laughs> um, so uh, I basically just want to spend the rest of this talk um, Seeing the praises of balsa wood, it's, it's cheap, it's light, you can buy it, it's commodity, it's um, ecologically friendly. The most of the stuff you can buy is uh, plantation grown, especially Australia's Australian plantation grown, which is great. Um, you can glue it, you can nail it, you should probably do both at the same time. Um, it really does save on time. 
Um, get the long bits. Um, I noticed in Lincraft they've got um, packs, um, plastic sealed packs of short bits. They're, they're great for, I don't know what exactly, but I started with one of those and it, I just got really mad because I wanted like slightly more than half of a, of a sheet which means I was going through a whole sheet every time I wanted to cut something of the same size, which wasn't, which wasn't fun. Um, something you may notice if you um, use uh, glue is that uh, the balsa wood will tend to soak up some of the glue. In particular, this is like a hint of what it will do if you put water on it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't, don't put it in the bath. Um, another thing I will recommend is uh, don't do all your cutting straight on top of your brand new IKEA desk. <laughs> Get a cutting <laughs> mat. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I didn't have anything else to say, so thank you. <laughs> Heaps of time for questions. Who's got a Don't try and stop me from doing creative things. Um, <laughs> the, it, you say it soaks up fluid and glue and whatnot. Can you use it to soak up resin and make it a little bit stronger? Because despite the fact that balsa wood is technically a hardwood, it is notoriously not hard. Yeah, it can be brittle. Um, I haven't tried soaking up resin. That would be an interesting experiment. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, give him a nice veneer. Uh, that is another problem that I thought might be a problem. Um, however, um, solution number one is I built the back of the case open so there's a little bit of ventilation in there. And um, two, like most of the uh, parts are designed to work uh, without uh, fan, uh, like active ventilation of any kind. Like Raspberry Pi is designed to work without a, a heat sink. Um, I have a small power supply underneath. That seems to be the hottest part. Um, and I have that hot glued and the hot glue hasn't come. So. <laughs> I don't think heat's a problem. But that is definitely a concern if you're building a, something with like, you know, you'd normally have water cooling or a massive monstrosity of a gaming machine, you probably will worry about the heat. I was just thinking when you're having problems with the brittleness of the, the device, maybe have a composite so you can get an old thin bit of cotton or something like that and just layer it so that that gives a bit of support and it just won't crimple on the edge. Or maybe oh, yeah. some other material that's heat resistant but a very thin layer so solve that problem as well. Mm. It's plenty of good ideas. Um, balsa wood's great at prototyping um, and it's so great at prototyping I didn't like think to jot down any design sketches or um, try and take measurements. Um, but I suppose I could do that uh, for the next iteration. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, right. Josh. Thank you. <laughs>